Today's video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And right now you can get this sweet scoop soldier sticker when you order over on cardkingdom.com. Just mention in your order notes that you want a scoop soldier sticker when you check out. Hey everyone and welcome back to Commander Clash. This week we are doing something we rarely do and probably something that we've actually never really done properly before. We're playing competitive EDH. Most of our decks on Commander Clash are somewhere, if, if it has to be ranked in like a scale from 1 to 10, we would be uh, sometimes between like 3 and sometimes between up to like 7-ish. We're like janky to semi-competitive, but we're never up to like the highest tiers of a commander deck. And sometimes we've actually dabbled in that in the past. We've done what we would try to call competitive EDH, but they weren't really the top end most powerful decks. And this week we're actually going to make our real first earnest attempt at competitive EDH, trying to play decks that would be classified as nines or tens in terms of the format, the highest powers possible. And with us this week to properly do this, so, you know, me and Seth are going to do our best. We're going to bungle it horribly. But thankfully, we have two people here that you know, are far more experienced than us, knowledgeable than us in competitive EDH. It's the people from play to win specifically Dylan and Cameron. So thank you very much to both of you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks so much. It's uh, great to be here. So uh, we'll start with you, Dylan. Um, what deck did you bring for this week, Competitive EDH? Uh, so I'm playing a deck called Four Color Rashmi Curious Control, which is a very long title that is essentially a Thrasios and Vile Smasher deck. It's probably one of the closer things to an actual control deck in the format. Mm -hmm. uh, it uses uh, sweepers or, you know, not actual sweepers, but stuff like Fire Covenant, Flame Sweep, Toxic Deluge. Uh, to control the board, and then it sticks a curiosity effect on a Vile Smasher to gain some value until eventually I can cast a Jace Wielder of Mysteries or a uh, a fish and consult away my library. Excellent. I've never seen Rashmi before, so... This yeah, is it's be... kind of funny. Rashmi is actually not even in the deck anymore. Originally, <laughs> this deck had Rashmi in it, and then Four Color Rashmi kind of stuck as the title for a while. So it's like the essence of what Rashmi Exactly. Represents. You put the curiosity on the mm -hmm. Vile Smasher, you make your own Rashmi. Um, but nowadays, the deck is kind of just called Curiosity Control or Curious Control. <laughs> okay, I got you. All right, Cameron, what deck are you bringing to the table this week? Well, I will be playing Urza Power Scepter this week that is based around uh, the Urza Lord High Artificer printed in Modern Horizons. Um, it's basically an artifact deck that has a lot of control elements since it's mono blue. Um, and the whole point of the combo is to put a dramatic reversal underneath Isochron Scepter so that you can continuously untap all of your non-land permanents infinitely, creating infinite mana, as well as being able to mill out your opponent using Codex Shredder. Um, so it's a very cool mm -hmm. artifact deck with a lot of counters, a lot of lock pieces as well. Um, so I'm very excited to get to play Mono Blue. So this is basically a stacks deck that kind of holds down the fastest of the fast combo decks, if I'm understanding it correctly. Oh, basically, yeah. You get to play cards like Winter Orb, Static <laughs> Orb, and those two cards in particular with Urza combo in ways that really help me out that are really going to hurt you guys. <laughs> Yeah, stacks made asymmetrical thanks to the whole tapping ability and the old old schoolness of the uh, old artifacts. That's that's really neat. All right, Seth, what are you bringing to the table this week? So I like drawing cards, and the only thing I might like more than drawing cards in Magic is making opponents miserable. So my deck kind of combines that together. This is a uh, Opus Thief, which is essentially a deck that it does win with. The combos that we've kind of talked about before and seen other deaths, uh, Thassa's Oracle, also Jace, exiling the library with like demonic consultation, 
But I'm also trying to uh, get down a Notion Thief or maybe a Narsa and then cast a wheel, wipe away all your hands while I get to draw tons of cards. So so kind of has multiple combos going on. But I think, I mean, I'm not an expert in CDH, but this very much feels like a combo deck to me. I feel like I'm Mm -hmm. trying to draw cards, uh, protect my combos, resolve one of my combos, and hopefully that combo essentially wins me the game. Combo and wheel combined. I think this matches everything. Everything you stand for, Seth, just in the highest power. And this week I get to play Wheel of Fortune, even though it's over $100, and you can't say anything about it, Tomer. Exactly, exactly. There is no, there is no budget restriction this week. We, we take a, we put away all the house bands and everything. We're, we're playing proper CEDH without like extra restrictions or anything. This is no hold bars. So yeah, I won't complain too much, Seth. <laughs> Uh, all right. And hi, this is Tomer. I am running Oracle. And this is, this is like when I think like the top level CEDH deck, I always think Thrasios, Trident Hero, and Timna the Weaver, the partner pairing that runs the Flash Hulk combo. And now more recently runs Thass's Oracle in it as well with Demonic Consultation. So this deck is trying to assemble the Thass's Oracle win. Trying to get to the point where I have no cards in my library. I put down Thassa's Oracle. The triggered ability goes on the stack. And then boom, I just win the game. So that is what this deck is doing. I'm very excited because the combo itself is uh, incredibly powerful. And uh, I'm very eager to, to assemble it. I'm not sure if I will actually assemble it though. Because I am terrible at this game. <laughs> but uh, hopefully it will be entertaining regardless. So with the deck's intros out of the way, let's hop into the game. What did what did you play last time we played uh, CDH Tomer? I'm trying to. Was I played there... Edric. Oh, what did you play the time before yeah. that? Wasn't there one that went like disaster? Did you try to play Doomsday or something, and it went like? Oh yeah, it was terrible. I was so <laughs> bad at it. Disastrously wrong. Yeah, it was so. I even I even did a practice stream on it too, and I had like an Excel sheet. It's like, <laughs> all right, if you have such and such mana. And, and blah, blah, blah. Then you have, you do this doomsday pile. And you, oh, you, you have <laughs> such and such cards and you do th- this doomsday. It was very difficult for me. I think that's such a win. hard card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, like when, when the video went up, we basically just had like a bunch of explanations in the comment section on how I could have won on any given turn. <laughs> <laughs> it was very enlightening. Like, <laughs> oh jeez, I can't wait to hear all the comments on how I'm misclicking in Magic Online. I, do, oh, I am yeah. not a uh, a computer player when it comes to Magic. Well, I, I think people understand. Like when we're doing these when we're doing these videos, I don't think people come here to watch expert level play. Like I'd be very oh, surprised. <laughs> People just come here to watch just like banter and just shenanigans. And I hopefully, hopefully we can deliver on that. Uh, definitely not, uh, uh, excellent play. Um, if you came to watch that on my point of view, especially, uh, be, be ready to be disappointed, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think this hand is actually pretty sweet. Um, so I'm just gonna keep it. Ooh. Yeah. My hand is slow and powerful. Like, like oh no! I'm I'm deck. putting a card down at the bottom of my library. I'm not too happy with this. Uh oh. Yeah, I I had to mulligan once because I had zero lands, but my second seven seems pretty good, and I even get some uh some free ramp before the game even starts. Ooh. Uh, nice. I think we'll get rid of laboratory maniac. All right, yeah, you ahead. don't need that to win. Yeah, yeah. What do I need that for? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So every single time I see Sensei's Divining Top, I immediate, my brain immediately goes to counterbalance. Every single time. <laughs> see, now I that I'm so used to EDH and CEDH, I always go to um, Bolas' Citadel now. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's crazy how many mm. new things have been uh, incorporated into like a three-card combo with Sensei's Divining Top and, and uh, Artifact Cost Reducers. Yeah, Elsha's up there now, too, uh, as a... Yeah. Yeah, Elsha is really good with top. Oh, I was actually wondering, what are your favorite new cards from Ikoria? Like, what are you going to start tinkering with? Or actually, let's start with Commander 2020 first. What, are there any cards that stand out for you as a competitive EDH, as competitive EDH players that you're like, I immediately need to have to start brewing with this? Definitely. Uh, yes. Um, Brawlin and Shabraz. I've been working on those guys this week. The Jeskai pairing, the Shark Bird Lava Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of works a little bit like Curious Control, actually. You put Curiosity effects on Brawlin, uh, and then discard a card either in your end step or do a discard effect, and you get to repeat that process. Every time you deal damage with the Curiosity effect, you machine gun everyone down, 
I think that deck is pretty good. So I guess basically as long as you have more cards in your library than people have health totals, you just kind of kill them during your end step or, or discard phase, right? Yep. Yeah, 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 exactly. And normally, I mean, even if you've drawn through 20 or 30 cards, you still have, you know, 60 cards in your library and everyone's at 30 or 20 life. So you can you can get through it. Mm-hmm. I am very excited about the new uh, the new Sultai partners. Are they in the commander set or are they in... Icoria. Uh, That's the commander product. The, the the fish the fish wolf Ukimi Ukima. Yeah, the yeah, 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 they're yeah. um <laughs> they're in they're they're in uh Commander twenty twenty. I dip I dip my toes into CEDH with food chain decks, and mm. I'm very excited for a a bug variant of a food chain, especially because you still get to run the consult fish lines, which is also very attractive to those colors too. Yeah, food chain is a, a powerful win con in CDH, and and those two can take use of it. Oh, a f- oh no! Okay, this no, is why I was so excited about this hand. By the way, <laughs> it has my favorite yeah, card. Yeah, game's over. We can all pack it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm kind of, I'm, I was a little bit worried. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, nice. <laughs> all right. I'm oh, sorry. I'm yes. not letting any of this happen. We're not having busted starts here. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I can imagine the Mystic Remora gets 10 times better in the CEDH. Oh, it gets oh, yeah. so out of hand so quickly, yeah. <laughs> well, you also just... It's also very good. Sorry, go ahead. The yeah. issue with Mental Misstep is that sometimes when a when a target presents itself, you also just have to accept that that is going to be the target. And mm, yeah. that's just the end of that. Yeah, it's also incredibly powerful in Commander Clash in general because Seth just refuses to not cast spells into it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I will. I will never pay, and never. I will. I not will cast all once. my spells. I will not pay. <laughs> he can cast his commander. He could do anything else, but he's like, oh, I gotta draw cards. Yeah, so that's what I respect. That <laughs> I do not. So I gotta. I gotta ask a, a CDH question. So as I was looking at these decks, it kind of struck me that a lot of them seem to uh, have Thassa's Oracle as a win condition. Yeah, uh, basically all at this point. <laughs> yeah, so that seems like kind of uh, you have different variations. Of the Thassa's Oracle, like, kill, like, different decks that are playing it, but uh, what do you think about Thassa's Oracle, and what do you think <clears throat> also about Hulk? Like, when I saw these decks, the first thing that came to mind is, like, maybe Thassa's Oracle is actually, like, the bigger problem than Hulk is, but I'm not a CDH player, so what do you think about that whole conversation and debate? Yeah, so I can start on this one. It's kind of tricky. Um, I think... Thassa's Oracle is more of a problem in actual practice. In the games that we play on the channel, Thassa's Oracle Consultation wins much more games than Flash Hulk does. But what mm-hmm. Flash Hulk does to the actual games itself is really the problem. You don't actually get as many wins with Flash Hulk, but just the presence that anytime there's a Flash Hulk player at the table, if they have a blue and a colorless open, everyone has to hold back. Like no one can advance their board. They have to hold up counter magic because the Flash player can win at instant speed. Um, so like in actual gameplay, I think Thassa's Oracle and Consult wins more games, but in like theory, Flash is the worst. Um, to be fair, if this were a real competitive format, I would think Flash and Thassa's Oracle probably should be banned, but since even, you know, we can make it as competitive as we want. It's still a casual format. I don't think those cards are going. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I kind of feel the, the same way. Um, I was, I've been talking about this, you know, when we put up our decks with our, um, I'm sorry, when we posted our video with our personal decks, and, uh, you know, my, my personal deck is still mono blue, but into fairy. Um, and the issue with that deck is that I have to win at sorcery speed. And. Oh, it's a starting already. Oh, geez. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, my hand's not that good. I'd like to cross yeah, a card. Okay Holy cow. Okay Holy this. cow. Oh, this. I'm fine with this. This is all yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> um. But yeah, but it, it's that, that, uh, like Dylan said, it's that constant threat and always having to make sure that you are playing around somebody potentially being able to go off that quickly. It's, it's terrifying at, at times. But at the same time, you know, it creates a very cool, uh, dynamic in game too. Um, where, you know, you're, it's like there's a big, uh, Mexican standoff, almost like that scene from The Office. When uh, they're all... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly that scene from The yeah. Office. Every game is everyone's holding finger guns at each other. <laughs> and I, I think that's what makes it really exciting. Like, when I'm watching your games, especially, I, I personally do not play much competitive EDH. To the shock of all the viewers, I hope. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually not too familiar with it myself. But what I find so engaging about 
uh, watching you guys play and also watching like other channels like Spike Feeders is that the game can end at any moment because the flash hog threat is always there and it adds like this really fun tension to every single turn because like, I think so too. Yeah, game, yeah, because in a typical game, like there's a lot of turns where just nothing happens and you can kind of tune out on it. Uh, because you know nothing, nothing is is presenting a, re- a real threat at the table. But when you have when you have those, uh, ooh, I can play my commander. This this is this is why why it's being close is always uh, a little bit scary for me. All right, here we go, here we go, Thrasios. Um, but yeah, like that 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 adds such like excitement to every single turn. And me, even though, yeah, sure, every single game ends with, with the Oracle or the Flash Hawk combo, uh, it makes every single turn itself really, really exciting. And also, I think there's a lot of variance in terms of all, this, all the different decks that end up having the same finisher. Like, even if we look at the table here, like, most people are playing Thas's Oracle, but the way they get to that point is going to be very, very different. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. That's the biggest thing, I think, is that, yes, we're all like winning the same way, but the way we win, the journey is different. And that's like the interesting part of Magic anyway. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. It's like reverse Legacy almost, uh, if you've ever played Legacy. In Legacy, mm-hmm. uh, you you kind of have to play Force of Will and Brainstorm and Ponder. So you all have like the same disruptive package, but then you can win the game in a whole bunch of different ways. And sometimes you have like really weird, like strange wind conditions that people are like using within that that blue shell and it sounds like it's kind of the same thing like legacy is a really diverse format but 70 percent of decks play force of will it sounds like cdh is kind of similar where the format's actually diverse but a lot of the decks have like the same wind condition that they're going to get to eventually i think that's actually a pretty good uh comparison there i hadn't thought of that before so is is cdh more broken now than it was before Theros Beyond Death? Like, has Thassa's Oracle, like, made the format more degenerate? Or was it already, like, roughly the same, but this is just, like, slightly better than the old way of doing it? I I kind of think this is slightly better. Um, Just because, you know, before, the the ways that you would win with Thassa's Oracle, I'm sorry, with, um, with, like, Demonic Consultations were a little bit clunkier with, like, Laboratory Maniac. Where you still had to have a way to draw a card. Or you had to spend like three mat three blue and a color sign of Jace, which is just a lot. Yeah. And even mm-hmm. still, that 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 Jace is still a newer card, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I think the main thing that Thassa's Oracle did is it, it made it put a couple of the best decks together. It lets you like play Flash Hulk and the console package, which used to be two separate things in the same deck really easily. That was like the biggest thing it did. It made like the two best decks in the format one deck, if that makes sense. Yeah, that definitely that definitely makes sense. Just kind of mash together uh, all the different good things. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Does that kind of mean that uh, for most competitive EDH decks these days, you need to be in both blue, blue and black to, you know, prop, or sorry, Sultai rather, to have um, that complete package? Well, it's no doubt that those are <laughs> certainly the best colors in CEDH. I do find myself saying, like, time and time again when I'm building a deck, like, this deck is good, but it doesn't have access to black, so it's, like, automatically steps below or something like that, which kind of stinks. That's fair. See, so this game, I'm glad we're starting on this game. I think there's a big misconception that all CDH games always end on turn three. So a lot of times they don't. Sometimes it's just a grind fest for the first couple turns. Yeah, this this actually, like, looking at the, the board right now... This doesn't really look that much different than one of our like normal Commander Clash games, <laughs> in all honesty. Right. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. it doesn't, yeah. No, we've actually found that most of our games on our channel have about the same length as our um, casual games as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A lot of our, our games go to like turn seven or later. I think what people always forget is like, yes, all these decks have the capability of winning on turn one or turn two or whatever, but the rest of the decks also have the capability of stopping a turn one, two, or three win. So you're really like one against three on winning in the first couple of turns, which is hard. Yeah, I didn't notice looking over the deck list that they're loaded with a high amount of interaction. Um, and not only that, but because it has such a high number of tutors as well, not only do you have a high number of interaction spells, but you have all these tutors that can find the interaction spells if you need them. Yeah, exactly. And just like the high amount of card draw, like... Windfall being just like a normal thing to have in your deck, wheels being a normal thing to have, necropotence. So the odds are you're just going to have a handful of like interaction when you need it. 
Yeah, that's the thing. I think people, yeah, like I said, people forget that a lot. It's like, yeah, you can win, but mm-hmm. also three people are trying to actively stop you. So it's it's hard to, it's like harder to win early than in like other formats sometimes. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people that have like Force of Wills and Fluster Storms and, and whatnot exactly. to have to fight through under do. Oh, boy. <sighs> I, I oh, speaking well. of card draw in CEDH, <laughs> yeah. don't, yeah. don't worry about it, <laughs> Tomer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how's it going? <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, the only thing I, I dislike, so I like drawing cards, and I hate seeing Seth draw more cards than me. <laughs> uh, Your th- commander mm. draws cards. Just we'll we'll have a fair battle. Ristic study versus Thresios. Seth, both of your commanders draw cards as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I feel like I need them. to counter this, <laughs> Tomer. Uh, I'll do it. If you, I'm I, not sure if this is incorrect or not, though. Are you gonna two for one yourself to stop my Ristic yes! study? Oh, Tomer, <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. You can't Thank draw you, more cards than me, Seth. It's against the rules. <laughs> nope. I'm I am so for this it's not even funny. <sighs> All right. Tomer. See this is going to make it <laughs> awkward cuz I had a turn that I really want to get through and I wasn't sure <laughs> if I should waste my counter magic on Ristic study or let it go past so I can make sure my turn goes through. But Age I mean old question. I, I wish it, I could give you an answer. <laughs> yeah, if if it was anybody but Seth, I'd probably, probably let it happen, <laughs> that you, I know you're not joking either. <laughs> you know, I'm not. All right. This is great for Cam and I. You guys can fight amongst each other. So oh, I wanted this oh. to go through. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um and I feel like most of the table will want this to go through too. <laughs> I statistically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder what this is going to be. <laughs> targeting here. It, it could All be, right, hold it, on. It could honestly, it could anything. target anything. I got there's a, so many options. I got a couple things I got to do here. Man, there's so many, so many things you have to click when you're trying yeah. to delve spells from your graveyard here. Oh, yeah, there, there are many. I couldn't even players. begin to understand how to do that. <laughs> All right, oh, there we go. All right, good job. There we go. Okay. I hope this means you don't have the counter in hand, or, and are just desperately looking for it. For it. Oh, well, it could that's, mean a lot that's of my that. gamble right now. <laughs> I think we're gonna take this and. As far as other things from the new set, though, the free spells, the, com- the free if you have your commander out, I think a lot of those are going to impact CDH and probably regular EDH. How? Right? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, they're definitely going to regular uh, EDH for sure. How good is the blue one? Like the the free negate. I think the blue. So it depends. I think in decks like um like Nigila or decks like Thrasius and Timna, where you actively want your commanders out earlier, it's obviously very good. But there are some commanders. Um, one that I can think of off the top of my head is like something like Brea, which normally you don't cast Brea until you're already winning mm-hmm. those decks will be bad in obviously but in, in not in every deck it doesn't go in every deck but in the right decks I think the blue one is really good I think it's probably one of the better Urza things. was Urza certainly going to benefit from it I feel like um, the the Flashhawk lists are certainly going to benefit from benefit from it all as the, well all the partner commanders when you have two commanders it's supposed yeah. to be really oh, better yeah. oh yeah I think some of the other ones might even have potential to see some play as well um, yeah, I was wondering what, what your thoughts on the red one was, which is like a redirect, but can also redirect abilities. Yeah, I think the red one's really good. I'm more excited about that one than other ones, just because like the tempo value that you get to it, like say someone, like say you're in a re, like a reanimator deck and someone tries to kill something of yours. If you can like redirect that to the hate piece that's stopping you from winning. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm just, that's going to be so good. Oh yeah. There's some pretty nuts stuff you can do with that card. Yeah, I feel like the red one is actually my favorite, even though I think maybe overall the blue one seems like the most powerful, at least at least in like my power level circle. Um, but the red one, I feel like it has so many cool kind of fun applications. Like even if somebody's trying to reanimate a specific target and you just make them reanimate like a much worse target, I think that's just like really fun. Here <laughs> you can have Sakura <laughs> tribe elder back. <laughs> yeah. Or, like they want to reanimate their their protein hulk or whatever and just make them get a Sakura tribe elder instead or something. It's just it's absolutely funny. The, yeah the there's just a lot of really funny to, yeah the blue one is definitely no, sorry i was just gonna say the blue one is probably has a higher floor but the ceiling of the red one is much much higher if that makes sense mm-hmm. um i feel like the only one that i'm not that excited for is the green one the green one seems very very narrow like it's just, ov- it's going to lead to blowouts in certain situations but it's reliant entirely on like basically the attack step and you know blockers and attackers. I 
It doesn't seem that great to me. I mean, it's still a free fog, right? Like, obviously, it it, it probably depends on... If everyone's winning with combos, it's not exciting. But in a random, like, people beating down with creature type meta, it seems like it's probably fine. Yeah, do you think that would have any application in CDH? I guess not if, if like, Thassa's Oracle is the de facto way to win. Well, I was also so, yeah, thinking, like, exactly. if unless there's, like, a a infinite combat commander, but even then that still only is one turn of combat that that green one would save you from. Are there mm-hmm. creature decks in CDH? Like, I, I know everyone has creatures, but are there, like, I'm going to, like, build a big board of stuff and attack people to death type decks? Or is that just, like, not really what CDH is about? Um, kind of. Najila and Edric are good examples of that, even though the way that they're winning is eventually through a combo, or like infinite attacks or infinite turns, but they are still creature decks. Oh, I'm sorry. I keep talking over Dylan. Jeez. No, you're <laughs> good. Um, one of my favorite decks in the format is a pod variant, a birthing pod variant, where, with uh, Timna and Tana as your commanders. Um, which is still, you know, it, it's a, it's a stack stack that uses a lot of like enchantments, but it's still mostly considered to be a creature based deck since you have a lot of creature combos in there with uh birthing pod shenanigans too. That sounds sweet. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Every deck is a combo deck. It's just what version of combo, like creature combo, combat combo, spell combo. Yeah. And I guess that makes sense. I mean, most of the combo win conditions, like the only way to take out multiple opponents at the same time um, is generally combos and also the, the hardest to interact with, I, I imagine. Like Thassa's Oracle, you can't even you can't even kill it in response. Exactly. It's, it's trigger yeah. itself. And it's just better. It's easier to put two Ooh. cards together. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, I also <laughs> like to make my opponents miserable and lock them out of the game. <laughs> uh, this makes me not draw cards, Mission successful. Though. How am I supposed to cast my wheels? You should definitely, if you, if you can't counter it, I would propose that you counter it. That's not that important. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you don't need mana. That's it's like the most cards. overrated part of the game, is having <laughs> mana. <laughs> We we're just sure. talking about free spells, right? So, yeah. No. No. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, that's that's a bad sign. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I would I would like to continue to cast my spells. Uh, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> well, you know what, Dylan? That this is a, that's a shame. That's no! a real shame. Yes, the stack grows. <laughs> this is a real <laughs> shame. <laughs> All right. Okay. I really don't got it. Do yeah. this. Do it. So do it. Add do to it. the Help. stack. It must grow. I, I technically have a counter, but it's Pact of Negation, so it's like I have to time walk myself. Do, do I actually care about <laughs> Back to Basics really enough to skip my next turn? Anyway. Wait, what are you going to do if you're not you're not getting that <laughs> mana anywhere, right? Must, do you want to skip one turn or the rest of your turns? I get to untap my my talisman of progress. I promise I'm, there you I, go. I don't right. win on my turn. How about that? <laughs> Huh. I know. See, I still got a mana. <laughs> so think about how many more cards you could draw if your lands could actually untap after a while. <sighs> eh, sure, that's fine. Uh! <laughs> All right. Uh, I just have a basic in my hand. I can't. I I can't justify it. <laughs> I don't even think there are basics in this deck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's basics in my deck either. Actually, honestly, there, I I think um um no I'm I'm not going to. Um, I think Flashlook, I think um, Oracle purposely only plays one island specifically for Back to Basics. I don't think any of the other decks really can afford to. Oh, just, just to get around it? Uh, do I yeah, because you can just play Flash. Like, all you need to resolve is Flash through Back to Basics, so you just need an island. Oh. I'm oh, yeah. Second you'll just have, now. Like, is that because... Yeah, you and you have Besage you, too, so... Yeah. But the Besage is not untapping now, no. Oh, yeah, Tomer, you can't do anything, can you? Ha <laughs> ha. Ah, if I you mean, would let that Rhystic lands. Study resolve, Tomer, I would have Pact of Negation and just drawn uh, Rhystic Study cards. So this is really on you, really. Well, I mean, <laughs> I had Urza for a brief moment. It was glorious. I didn't have artifacts to tap with him, but I mean, I could have. And then that Back to Basics would have been really nice for me. Okay. All right. Well, waiting. now we're in session. Yeah. This This feels like CDH now. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. It took a couple turns, but we got there. <laughs> so you don't need to you don't need to answer this if you don't want to. But I was wondering 
with the quarantine and all, can we still expect to see more play to win episodes? Like, can you guys still do a setup that's like webcam? And is is there any any uh, plans for that going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So luckily, um, Tyler and Brandon are two of the players that we have on are my roommates. So they are quarantined oh. in with me. Um, so we've recorded a couple of three player games. Um, I think that's probably what we're going to stick to for now, just to keep it the paper feel of it. Um, but we will have three player games on the channel for a while now. Okay, very sweet. We have thought about doing, um, like Discord, bringing camera on Discord and stuff. We just haven't actually worked out how to make that happen yet, but hopefully. Yeah, have you tried? Have you tried playing that? I've seen people on like Twitter talking about playing like over Discord or like these kind of like elaborate webcam setups and stuff to play Paper Magic from home. Have, have any of yeah, you tried we- that? It seems tough to me because especially like if I'm if I'm trying to spike out here and you know really focus on winning the game it's significantly harder for me to really evaluate the board state when you can't really see everything and I feel it's especially and I'm not saying I don't want to be in the videos I'm really bummed I'm missing out on some stuff over here but staying safe is still you know most important of course um but well not unless I'm trying to thought yeah, it seems. Yeah, it well, seems hard we, to me. We too. have. It's just that I just feel you know, with, <laughs> with me being the only one that is, um, you know, not present, not being able to see everything with you know, one hundred percent accuracy, it yeah. might be a little bit tough. Um, and I'll certainly feel disadvantaged, but um, it also would not be the end of the world. You know, when you when you haven't played Paper Magic in as long as I have, you know, you start to do things like play Magic Online and. <laughs> yeah, you, get the itch. you play magical. Uh, <laughs> On that note, welcome for joining. And uh, I don't know. I was really happy to see or when we were, when we're recording this. Uh, there was an announcement that there's going to be improvements to Magic Online. So uh, it only took a, a pandemic for them to start improving the client. But I'm really excited for that. I, I hope that you know uh, stuff gets a little bit more intuitive. I've appreciated that they've kept the cubes up during this time as well. Oh. That's the best part. Just forcing storm every single game. That's 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 the cube I love. It's like as long as I get to play limited and force storm every single time, uh, I'm happy. Uh, okay, so you have some land, Dylan. I have something, but no, no island there. Back to basics seems really good in this format, where apparently no one plays basic lands. <laughs> 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 it is pretty good. It was not good in our uh, one color CEDH video. I can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that would probably make it a little worse. Yeah, that was pretty bad. But this this is the situation I've been waiting for. This is definitely the situation I've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think. My I don't know how well my play works here. I, I definitely I blame gonna... Seth for that. If you didn't play Rustic Study, I would have had an answer. <laughs> uh... I had to draw more cards on me. Yeah, I am assuming you choose you chose the wrong three mana blue enchantment. <laughs> I feel like in hindsight, I probably should have just allowed it to happen. Maybe the Rhystic study wouldn't have been that bad. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We'll let the viewers decide. Can, how do we get one. it back to the basics <laughs> off the battlefield though? Like that's that's the issue now. I, I assume unless we can get it off the battlefield, it's gonna be really hard for <laughs> any of us to win. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a nature's claim or something, but yeah, my deck runs chain of vapor, so at some point, I'm hoping that uh, I'll find it and then just like bide my time until there's a good time for me to untap. There you go. I we'll have one turn cycle like where you guys will get your lands. All right, now let's see what we do here. Untap. We could just trust in the mana crib. It only what? Yeah, I mean, like <laughs> thirteen. All right, that's the plan, losses. everyone. Yeah. Tails never fails. Let's see how this goes. Tails never fails. Oh, I lost yes. the flip. What is <laughs> this? You didn't pick heads. Heads always wins. Everybody knows this. All right, it's the moto secret: fifty percent on time, it wins a hundred percent on time. Uh, I guess we could do. It. Yeah, here. Let's. All right. Oh boy, Big Pop is back. Here we go. Yeah. He's yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have please a- ignore my seventeen life total, Cameron. Do not attack. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, man. Sorry, it's I unfortunate. Mean- I got you guys all locked up here, and I can't do a ton after this. I guess you have the beatdown plan, right? <laughs> Eventually, I'll get there. <laughs> I I think I I think I have a plan. Let's see if this actually works, though. So we're gonna we're gonna crack our fetch land. 
hope for a basic that I'm pretty sure does not exist. Uh, all right, we'll take... Hmm. All right, let's try this. We'll take Underground Sea, and then... Uh, mm-hmm. No, no counters, please. Uh, <laughs> Cyclo- Cyclonic Rift. Ooh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Nobody else wants okay. to counter this for me. No. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm I'm weirdly fine with this. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we probably don't want back to basics to come down again next turn. Actually, if we're gonna pay life, let's do it this way. Um. Wait, how are you going to stop that? I'm Probably with the meddling right. mage is what uh, I would imagine. Oh, wheel. Let's wheel. Oh, um, let me think here. Mm. You know what? I'm fine with this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, dealt with the, I dealt with the back to basics. There's a um, method um, to the badness. Um, yeah. I just wonder what my... a couple uh, cards here. Oh, you get to keep your the cards you want. With Brainstorm. That's good. Is. Have you ever actually ciphered a Whispering Madness? I feel like I've never ciphered a Whispering Madness. I always forget that that's part of the card. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I think maybe one time, not not often. It's great when you get to do it, though. Yeah, it does seem yeah. like it'd be sweet just to like wheel every turn. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. Wait. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you both are realizing that we might be dead or something. No, no, no. You're not dead, but <laughs> okay. Okay. I think I can. I can maybe keep being helpful. The table. What do you mean helpful? Define helpful. Uh, how about curse totem? Oh, that's that's, mm. that's pretty bad for Urza, right? Pretty bad for Thrasius sticks too. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I love how you that phrase that as being helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm shutting off Urza from doing annoying things. things. Um, <laughs> you're really the one no, game. you're not. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I probably, right. probably deserve that. So is Curse Totem like a a staple of CEDH, assuming your deck is not playing like a bunch of creatures with activated abilities? Is it like pretty good against most decks in the format? There's a lot of decks it's Definitely. really good against, and a lot of commanders it's really good against too. Yeah, great against green decks at Thrasios and Urza, which is some of the most common stuff in CEDH. Very good, I think. I guess this is a super cheap way to stop mana dorks too. Yeah. What do you got, Tomer? I don't know. I, 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 this, this wheel is nice. I don't know. I can't complain. <laughs> oh, no. Did I wheel you um, into the win? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, maybe. Let's see what I ponder for. I hope you did. Tomer, you've been a little bit low on mana this whole time. Uh, A little bit, yeah. Hmm. Oh, this is kind of... No. None of these, like, further my game state. So I'm just going to... I'm going to just shuffle this away. Again, might be wrong, but who knows. I just want to go for the win. Boom. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, out of the decks we're playing today, which one do you think would be the best? Like, which, which are, are these all, like, equal as far as, like, tier one? Or is one of them, is, like, the Flash Hulk deck, is that is that, like, the clear best deck in the format? It's like a tier zero yeah, deck, right. a lot of people say. Yeah, yeah Thrasius and Tim is considered by a lot to be tier zero. Um, oh, hmm. just a Sol Ring. <laughs> yeah, I think Thrasios and Timnus considered to be tier zero, and then these other decks are probably firmly in tier one. Um, but Commander's eh, funny. If we all team up on Tomer, who's playing Flash Hulk, there's no way he can win. So uh, it, the data is kind of tricky, I think. Yeah. I guess, yeah, in, in a multiplayer format, it does kind of balance it out a little bit more. If there's one deck that is just like uh, eking out ahead, you can all just focus on that one more. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the, the, I mean, there's not a ton of CDH tournaments, but the ones that are, are, they're often won by like weirdo decks that no one understands how they work. <laughs> it seems like. I, I remember reading like a deck report that was like Heliod just destroyed a bunch of like Thrasios decks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That new Heliod is, uh, is, is actually a contender, I think. Yeah. It's got a lot of combos. I did, I did see it on your channel, actually. Uh, the Heliod and what was it? Heliod and there was another one. It was up against Oracle to see how well they would do. Uh, oh, we know, had we had also, two oh. Flash Hulk decks against Heliod, yes. and then we also had uh, the first sliver food chain deck. Yes, and like mm, the, the, the Flash Hulk decks still seemed like they were able to just go too fast sometimes. Oh yeah, they absolutely. Yeah, I remember that game. That was rough. They crushed him. Mm. Yeah, we had a turn two win in that video. Did we? Oh yeah. Wow. I guess if you just have Hulk in your hand and you. Fine flash, that's it, right? 
Yeah, exactly. I think that is what happened. I don't want to spoil it. I want people to go watch it, but um, that basically is what happened. Mm-hmm. Or it didn't happen. You'll have to see the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have to watch yeah. the video. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, anything could have happened. Really wanted that back to basics. Yeah, Except I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's let's cast the boy. Alright. Is there any any crazy shenanigans with Smasher or is it more of just I wanna have Rectus? Um, this is the only interaction the name oh. of the deck is Curiosity on Vile Smasher. He's just a draw engine, basically. Um that's not yeah, bad. that's the real reason for Vile Smasher. Sometimes he actually gets their own damage, but not often. Yeah. I should play a land probably here. One, two, three, four. I don't want to cast these things, so more man. A little bit of rebuilding. Yeah, I mean, it's turn six and nobody has won yet, so. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. I, I think, like, the misconception of CDH is that we win on turn two or turn three. The real, the reality is we try to win around then. Yeah. It, it doesn't happen a lot of times. When there's a back to basics early on, we all have to fight over it and things go wrong. Things go wrong a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess, yeah, it just comes down to how much, like, stacks there is and interaction there is. There's like a exactly. lot of games where I play casual games where people just like develop a huge board state and everybody's just wondering if anybody will ever find a board wipe just to deal with something. So games can go pretty fast too if people just don't have interaction. I'm still pretty worried about Urza. I still feel like I could just get locked out of the game any any minute now. It's likely. Five cards. All right, on, T- tails never fails. <laughs> well, you guys told me heads it's works. Let me try heads this wins. time. That's that's the mode away. I don't you know. I'm going tails this time because I had uh, it got heads last time. So let's try tails right, this right. time. I won the flip. All right, there we go. Oh. There All we right. go. It's a good thing that I took the statistics time works every time. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think let's start off. What? Okay, transmute oh. artifact. You sacrifice an artifact, and if you do, you search your art- library for an artifact card. Uh, That's not good for oh, us. Oh, then you have to pay the difference? Yeah, I will have to pay the difference. <clears throat> um, Is that is that scary? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So this can normally get dramatic scepter, dramatic, um, can get ice crown scepter, if, but if he has, it doesn't have dramatic scepter in his hand, that doesn't do anything, but if he does have dramatic verse in his hand, then we, we are dead. Mm. Um... So yeah, I, I yeah, I'm, uh, hmm. yeah. I don't think there's a point where he'll cast. I guess there will be a point where he'll cast spell again. I'm not sure, honestly. Mm, I'm kind of okay with it. I think yeah. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I think you should counter. I'm gonna say. <laughs> but my Ristic <laughs> was scary. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were drawing cards. Back all right, basic, there's a difference. That's fine. Transmute artifact. <laughs> no worries. But Ristic study. That's <laughs> across that the line. <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> Guess this is the correct play. I don't <laughs> want you to yell at me. I, I was gonna do something cool, but fine. Did I did I goad you into it? <laughs> yes, yes, you did goad me into this. See politics and CDH. <laughs> Goading me into doing the correct play. <laughs> I guess it could have been bad if it was even less like transmute artifact that's like winter orb or something. That would have been not great. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of options that I have for really good tools. All right, well, I'm going to do something that you don't always get to see with this deck. <laughs> I'm going to attack. <laughs> oh, no. Beat downs. I'm attacking people who counter my oh, spells, wait. I think is going to be my <laughs> my philosophy. In my here. defense, it was actually Seth's fault because he manipulated me. <laughs> It doesn't so matter. Just... It, uh, it doesn't matter the journey as to how we got here. This is the reality that we're in. <laughs> if only you hadn't counted that Ristic study, I wouldn't have had to <laughs> go do. If only you didn't play spell. the Ristic study and tried to challenge my dominance and card draw, which I'm actually falling woefully behind at the rest of the table here. Yeah, I'm in last place drawing cards. I'm gonna have to fix that somehow. That's actually how Seth and I gauge who's winning the game, actually. <laughs> it's not actually about who says you win the game at the end. It's, it's whoever drew the most cards, which I guess make, works really well in EDH or CEDH because that's his oracle. It's normally a direct comparison. Yeah, direct correlation. Ooh. Ooh. Where's the spin? What do we get? Where's the spin? Oh, there we go. I just felt like tapping five mana. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
reveal it didn't reveal anything uh no it's in my exile zone it was a delay oh oh, oh. oh, it was a oh delay. Delay. <laughs> yeah 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 and it's still end of turn yeah uh, so if somebody uh, had some okay. if somebody has something on my end step they better watch out <laughs> I think I'll, I'll pass on that. Oh. Right, 1, so. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I think we're going to cast this card. Uh, Remember, I, I, I didn't counter your thing. Uh, don't counter this thing either. Oh, Man, I should have held up my Lord High Artificer ability. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's hard to spin into a counter spell randomly, but <laughs> it would be pretty brutal if that happened. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I just want some mana. Yep. It's a lot of just mana. Just a bit. Two- Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven treasure tokens? Something like that? Uh, I can count. Yes, I lost something, count. something along those lines. Oh no, the, the mere signets are like twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just gonna let magic online count it. Fourteen, I think? Am I counting fourteen? Uh, fourteen. 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 That some good that's counting. a that's a good card for two mana. And then uh I guess we're <laughs> gonna do this. No, we have so many treasures, I don't think we need like Actual lands you anymore. Don't, you don't need lands anymore, no. Is Dockside this good in casual, Commander? Not. Because it is very good in our not, not, not quite uh, Urza with a bunch of artifacts good always. Yeah, it is a very strong card, but I don't think it's usually quite this good. Uh, yeah. Because right, you can get. Wait. Hmm. I feel like I should be able to do good things this turn. Uh, we'll discard this. We'll discard this. We'll discard this. We will cast this. Oh, why doesn't anyone have cards in hand? Hmm. Y'all are oh, no. making my windfall a lot worse than I want it to be. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, oh, boy. Okay, that's a lot of mana. Um... <laughs> yeah, this is not a good fluster storm target right here. Yeah, I think I can pay. I might be able to pay, actually. <laughs> Ooh, mental misstep. Nice. Oh, All right. Card. And, and I guess now we're seeing the real value of CDH. Yep. You're drawing a card for turn. Mm. <laughs> so, like, that's a card you never see outside of, like, the most powerful tables, mental misstep. Misstep, yeah. All right, let's, I think we got to actually counter back here. I would like my Vampiric Tutor. Oh, uh, okay. one of my favorite counter spells in the format. And it, Drylock is really cool. Yeah, and it's like, it could kill Urza if I needed it to. It actually seems pretty good. Yeah. Super versatile. It's my list as well. It's nice because you don't really have a lot of ways to deal with creatures in your list. I mean, you probably have, um, like, Abrupt Decay, and that's not even all of them. Um, you have Assassin's Trophy. If you're playing white, you have access to Path and Swords, but that's pretty much the extent of it from there. Yeah, it's it's really powerful in, like, modern and uh, for the same reason. Like, uh, you, you can have a counter spell, but also kind of, like, free roll removal, which I assume in CDH... Counterspell mode is probably like the big one, but Definitely. but then every once in a while, I'm sure it's nice to be able to uh, kill something too. Definitely, especially being in a Timna deck. Timna normally attacks a lot, and getting the way, able to move stuff out of the way every once in a while can be helpful. This seems like the right choice. Um, Don't do it. All right, I, Don't do it. I mean, I I'm gonna I'm gonna try to go off. We'll see what happens. But um, step one, chain of vapor. On what? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and then you can sacrifice oh a land, but you don't even need a land, so you can bounce more things afterwards. Yeah, I don't know if I care about bouncing more things at the moment. What's what's the end game here? You have only oh, twenty eight treasure. <laughs> yeah, one card in hands, and just like okay. Do you have another counter spell, Tomer? No, I'm just reading. Okay. I'm talking out loud. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to sack a land. We will replay Extortionist. Give me that treasure. Jeez. That is a lot of mana. Wow, that's a lot of treasures. Okay. You only have one card in your hand, though. Yeah, and it's Windfall, just, I think. Just, I did just cast a tutor. <laughs> I wonder what you got. The main question... I, I mean, I think if no one can interact, unless I horribly punt, which... Is very possible. I th- should be able to piece this together, I think. There's always a chance, right? So we're going to crack this fiery eyelet. Draw a card. Yeah. The card that we vampire tutored for. And how do we feel about um a classic? A wheel? No. Well, not yet. Yeah, opponents? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Wait, who, who, <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Who's this, Tomer? Yeah, hi. Oh, Tomer. 
You can't draw more cards than me, <laughs> Seth. Well, at least you got to skip that is, turn. That is crossing the line. You can make mana all you want. This is a pretty a pretty sad windfall, but we're going to cast it. Uh, now it, Who's got how many cards? Three. The I, thing I did not want. <laughs> Oh, now man. I just want to find like some land destruction and make Tomer die to his pact. <laughs> oh, I did not want to use those cards. Um, okay, okay. Let me think here. How am I going to respond? Mm-hmm. Oh, I really wanted that Yagwell. My graveyard is looking pretty good. Yeah, that would have been really insane. Both Yagwell. of my counters, my counters that, that way. way. You have spent all of your free counters stopping card draw of mine, essentially. And yeah. I have no regrets. Wait, what are what is getting revivaled? Just putting a swan song back on stop. That- Hopefully, so I can make sure I have some interaction that I draw into. Yeah, it seems seems good. You could even stop the windfall if you wanted to. I could, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> what had did, to try. Had to try. What did you want in hand? The so cards in my hand are no good either. I really wanted my well, protein bulk and my good. notion thief. Oh boy, how do I look at you? Okay, let me see your graveyard here. Those were not great draws. No. Oh. At least we got lots of treasures. Yep. Fire Covenant. Now the question is, how do I get my Hulk back? Where do I need to get my Hulk back? I guess I guess this one too. The whole... Yeah, it's... it's the whole everything. pairing. So I wonder if I was supposed to counter the Dockside Extortionist or Sandbag it like I did. Not sure. Uh, I mean... I, th- I, uh, usually- I don't know. Yagwill would have won me the game. Uh, yeah, I think Yagwill just would have gotten him way too much value. But if you stopped Extortionist, would I have ever been able to Yagwill? I'm not actually sure. Yeah, I don't know. You would have been bottlenecked on mana. Uh, yeah, definitely would have been a big pinch on mana. I was really hoping, though, to just drop down the Notion Thief. That's why I didn't want to use my mana drain. I was just hoping the, the Notion Thief could get dropped down before you do any sort of wheeling. And then I have Pact of Negation backing it up. Well, I agree with the attack the people that counter your stuff. Plan, oh, come, so. oh, come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> I am so glad you guys aren't attacking my 14 life total here. This is fantastic. Normally, I feel like I'd be dead by now. <laughs> uh, well, Tomer stopped my card draw. That's that's way more important than killing someone. <laughs> totally, I couldn't agree more. This is this is the best we're, you're ever going to see us do CDH. We're still going to have <laughs> irrational grudges against each other, no matter what. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to avoid sometimes, yeah. I understand. You can give us the best decks possible. We cannot guarantee that we'll play it properly. <laughs> or I cannot. <laughs> Alright, let's let's draw another card. <clears throat> yeah. Alright. Well, I guess that's it. Oh, that Yag will. I really wanted that one. Alright, Tomer. Well, enjoy mm-hmm. paying five for Pact of Negation. I will. I will. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, yeah, pay for me. Pact of Negation is... Wait, where's my mana, mana drain mana? Oh, is it during my first main phase? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boo. Boo. <laughs> uh, so I need to pay... I kind of want you to have some mana so you can cast two spells. I need my... My Kroom 2 draw me cards. I think I have to tap this. Yep. Ooh, and I take two for it? Ugh. Okay, I live. Success. So, Congratulations. speaking of C20, uh, do you think there's anything Dockside Extortionist level powerful in the set? Like, I assume this was, mm. like, the big standout from last year's Commander decks, as far as, like, uh, CDH at least, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It's kind of hard to tell so far, honestly. Sometimes I, I feel like I have to see some of them in play. Um, but the um, the white-black cat that lets you buy back a permanent CMC Ooh. 2 or less? Oh, no. Oh. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, let me think now. Uh, oh, that's, that's not good. Where are we right now? Is it your main phase? Yeah. But can you... But you don't have any angels. Great. Yeah, I'm uh, going to have to have mana. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty okay. far removed, but I wanted to get use out of my mana drain mana. Oh. I'm sorry. I really just want to draw a car off Vile Smash your curiosity. Um, yeah, I think the new cat that lets you buy stuff back and return the companion, I don't know if it's great as a companion because the restriction is kind of harsh, but I think that card is good. I don't know if it's Dockside good. Ooh. It's probably something I'm missing, to be honest. But um, Speaking speaking of companion, is, what do you think of the banning? Like, did that just have to... Totally, <laughs> totally for it. 
Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. We actually, so we actually we did a um a video last week um rule zeroing Lutri in to CEDH effectively. It, it's going up tomorrow for us. Mm. Um, and it was powerful. It is it is good, and it makes the I think it would make the format way too ubiquitous. It's, it would make all the decks basically the same. It seems thing. like you'd have There's to play to colors uh, that included it because it's just like too good not to get that free value for the most part. What's nice is that most so. of the decks in the format are are already playing those colors. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of decks that it can really easily slot into. And when it's your companion and you have no real opportunity cost for not having it, why wouldn't you? Yeah, it seems like you would just play it 100% of the time when it's in your colors. Like, uh, why? There, there, yeah, like you said, there's like no opportunity cost, really. Were you adding any any specific combos with the companion, or is it just like a really good extra value play where you could just fork whatever you need? It's a really good extra value play. I don't think the card was um, necessarily like um, like Paradox Engine good, mm-hmm. per se. It, it just made everything too similar. It wasn't that it was too powerful. It just like, it didn't add anything to the format, I don't think. It, or it's not going to. Right. It's just like an extra card that everybody, every deck should be having. Right, right, exactly. And I think it would seriously disadvantage the decks that don't have something like that. I mean, I, I, th- yeah. I think the next best companion would be the the white black one, but even still, like as a companion, that's a pretty high tax uh, for a companion cost just to have your whole deck at two CMC and less. I mean, a lot of decks are going to be like that for the most part, anyway. But like, you don't get to play stuff like Ristic Study, which is a huge disappointment. Oh, so Tomer, yeah. are we going to yeah. counter this Ristic Study, or is it is it just my Ristic <laughs> Study that gets the force of will? I think it's I think it's your turn to counter things. All right, I don't have anything. Well, you should have resolved some spells then. I'm Maybe actually some more cards. I'm jealous of this file smasher curiosity. That's a that's a pretty sweet it's, draw engine. Yeah, it's pretty it solid. is. Yeah, it can be pretty powerful. Multiple cards per turn for a pretty small investment. <laughs> You're gonna draw so many cards from that Ristic study. I can I can tell you that right now. I <laughs> you have treasure. I oh, you don't have an excuse. I do. I you have, have the most mana. I have nine treasures, and I had like thirty last time turn, and I'm still not paying Tomer. <laughs> wow, wow. I'm I, gonna attack you with this one, and you know this. <laughs> I might need those treasures later for something. <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely attacking with this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now I think we're going to go for heads. Oh, you can't mix it up midway. You got to fight a nickel for every time I heard that. Uh, (laughs) I won the flip with heads, so. Oh. Congratulations. Well, I mean, you shouldn't listen to me. (laughs) You shouldn't take CEDH advice from me, obviously. Like. I will say the one fantastic thing about Magic Online is you can't miss that trigger. We miss Magic Crypt triggers every single. It's incredible how much I forget about that card. (laughs) I feel like the amount of mistakes I would I would do on an actual paper game recording would be ten times the amount. And all of them would just because of like me doing rules violations, like missing an activated ability trigger, or, like doing something wrong, or like not knowing how much mana I have. Like all these little things are kind of all automated for you. So you can't really you, you can't do any illegal actions. Which is right, what's really right. good about MTGO. I think if we were playing paper, you would have probably died to your pack last turn. <laughs> My packs? Oh yeah, I would just forget, <laughs> yeah. and then somebody pointed out, and I'd be dead. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you paid for that, right? Is that what yeah, I did pay for. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, do you guys just play uh, CDH then, or do you play more casual games too? We each basically have a deck for just about every power level that there is, so we we like to mix it up every once in a while too. So, mm-hmm. what is your lowest power deck? Like, if you're going to play a really janky casual table. So, mine what is... <laughs> what do you got? Mine is mono white eight and a half tails. <laughs> nice. Um, it's it's nice. not designed to win games. It never has and it never will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, uh, it's very funny. You know, there's a lot of times where, like, people will have <laughs> removal or, like, some kind of... Uh, Something, some kind of interaction, basically of any kind, and nobody will ever want to point it at you because you can just word it all off. <laughs> it, it's actually pretty, uh, pretty hysterical. Yeah, I don't have any super low casual stuff. I do like playing casual, but really more like high power casual. I still like trying to do cool things. Yeah. Um, I have a a, a casual Tassiger deck. Which, how casual can you make Tassiger? 
um, and an Edgar Markov deck, which again is probably annoying to a lot of casual players. But those are my two fallback on for like casual types. I'll have to. This is me. Well, to be honest, I think right. we probably play a little bit more casual than competitive sometimes. It, it seems that at least like Tyler, my roommate, and I, it, we like relax with casual magic. You know what I mean? CDH is like that's when we want to think. And casual magic is when we kind of just want to like chill and relax. Yeah, commander. I mean, at least casual commander is great for that. Just like kind of hanging out with friends for the evening, not really having to think too much. Uh, competitive though, I mean, you have so many tutors, you have so many interactions that you definitely need your brain running at all times. I think to really play it at least uh, halfway decently. Hundred percent agree. Yeah, I'm. Mean, I've been noticing a lot. Like in CDH, it's just like just. So many, I have tutor options and I know what the end game is, but getting there is always like a, the big journey, the big puzzle, and it could be very taxing. All right, let's see if we can do something about this. Let's go with one, two. Well, that's a lot of mana. Oh boy. Oh. oh. Hmm. I don't always overload a <laughs> Cyclonic Rift in this format, but when I do. My treasures. Yep. Um. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm glad, Seth. I'm glad. Well, actually, that bounces my extortionist, too, so maybe that doesn't matter. I think I am going to do this. Though. Yeah, you're just going to get him right back. Um, yeah, but all the artifacts are gone, at least temporarily. Or some of yeah, them. Yeah, some of them. Yeah, Cam, don't play your artifacts again, okay? So he won't get the treasures. <laughs> well, that's a that's a tall ask over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I can't believe I'm uh, breaking my code, but I'm actually going to pay for Ristic Study. Are you kidding me? Thank I think that's literally you. the first time in my entire life. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Honestly, I feel honored that I'm one of your first Rusty <laughs> Study pays ever. <laughs> when there's literally nothing else you can do with treasure tokens, that's when you'll pay. <laughs> I guess this is the opportunity. Oh, do we do we care about this? Hmm. I mean, I lose a bird. I don't really. I kind of like my really board. Care. All right, let's. It's more a you problem. Yeah, it is a it is a me problem. We actually, I think we're actually going to try to counter this. Yeah, that makes sense. And pay for it, huh? No, no. well, you know, now yeah. that my treasure is oh sticking around, the paying is off. Right. I hope Dylan draws the counter off that and immediately counters Damn. it. <laughs> Dang, I didn't. I mean, I kind of like my board. It's all right. I mean, you have a card draw engine online. Two of them, sort of. Yep. All right, Dylan, are you taking this nine? No, I think I have to block because if I if I don't block, I go to like four or no three, and then I'm dead. I'm dead to flyers. I have to block. Sucks. I think that's not um, right. Is, I'm not I'm blocking yet, right? You're an attacker. Although I mean, I mean, the bird is going to be attacking, so <laughs> a principle. Well, I was sure you were fun while it lasted. I mean, it still drew. A ton of cards. Yeah, it definitely drew me a lot. It definitely served its purpose by now. So are there more curiosities in the deck, or is that like the only one that works with Vile? There's Keen Sense, which is the exact same card, but it's green. So you, you can kind um, there of are some, a yeah, little bit. Yep, yeah. There are other ones in the format that some other decks utilize, like Aphidian Eye, um, but this deck goes as lean as possible and doesn't use those ones. Yeah, Aphidian Eye is what, like three mana or something? Three, but it's flash. Okay, so that's yeah. flash. Side. And that one shows up in the new visits, right? Yep. Yeah, 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 it does. And I play in the new Brawlin and Shabra's deck. Um, I think it's pretty good there. Yeah, I was really excited when you guys played both Niv Mizzet and Edric in the same episode because I have a paper version of both those decks. Yeah, those decks are. Sweet. I had so yeah. much fun playing that Niv Mizzet deck. This can win out of nowhere so fast. Yeah, and it's. It's like kind of hard to like track the Niv Mizzet deck sometimes. You forget how many triggers are actually going on in the stack. At least in paper, I forget like, oh wait, you're drawing like five, six cards from that with a Niv Mizzet out or something ridiculous. Yeah. Can't wait to put the free counter spell on that deck. That's gonna be <laughs> the general. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> All right, you can oh. you can have a card. <laughs> yes, yes. No, you yes. said. Thank you. Yes, wow. This is a sto- all right. Like I Good. know I should expect it at this point, but it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's I divination now at least it's, it's, it's not one turn Tomer. you never know uh, we are banning uh, risk of study from commander class <laughs> house banning it <laughs> only on Seth episodes which is every episode alright let's go to combat see if we can draw some cards uh, so you go I guess you want to spread the love here. right yeah 
X Live. Uh, Tomorrow Block with his bird. Yeah, I, I'm in a hundred percent spite mode. <laughs> uh, I guess I got to do it like this. I'm not drawing cards off. Just it. for max card drawing. Hit me with your best shot. All right, give me something good. I have so much mana. I feel like I should be able to do something busted, but so far no. Uh, yes, we will draw two. So we talked about the Ooh. Commander 2020 cards. What about Ikoria? Are there anything anything out of there that's particularly busted that you want to try out in CDH? I think so, but I have a hard time honestly right now remembering which one comes from where. Let me pull up a list because I, I I definitely saved a list of cards that how, I. How uh, how about a Underworld Breach? Oh no! <laughs> how are how are you feeling about Breach? I can't stop it. Well, you know what? I was not a fan of the first time you tried to catch a Yawgmoth's Will. I'm certainly not going to be a fan of the second time that you you try to catch a Yawgmoth's Will. All my Yag Wills. All right. right. That's fair. I have too much mana to not be paying for these Ristic Studies. <laughs> oh, Draineth Magistrate. That's one that I think is coming out of the new set that I think is going to be really good to hate bear. Oh, yeah. That, that shuts down Underworld Breach. Commander. And it's off with every single commander. <laughs> yeah, it shuts down. It shuts down a lot of stuff. I think that one's going to be. Even mind sensor is very common in basically every white deck in CDH, and I think Draneth Magistrate is is on on the same level. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. That card just seems to have too unique of a of an effect to not see play. Really. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so that didn't work. But what about what about a Narsa? How do we feel about Narsa? Bad. <laughs> I feel great about it. I'm not I feel lie. like I'm going to get punished for not paying for this heuristic study because <laughs> it's going to draw into a counter spell. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so, Seb. Oh, maybe I should pay Wait, this Wait, did you, did you not pay for this heuristic study either? I'm gonna, this trigger? Uh, I'll pay for this one. I didn't pay for the last couple. Oh, my goodness. Ay, 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 ay. Ooh, all right. This is it wheel time? Well, we'll see what Narset reveals. Hopefully. Oh. It's nothing? It is, stone Cold Nothing? No, not Stone Cold Nothing, but close. Okay, revealing um, Mana Vault? Yeah, it's a Mana yeah. Vault. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> That's all I got. All right, no wheel. That's good. Yeah. Not being able to resolve any of my Yogg wills is making this much harder. All right, something good, something good. Ooh. Uh, okay. So I guess I uh, first I just like recast Gracias. Awkwardly don't have white for Timna, so that, Oh, that's kinda that's surprising. Yeah, that's a bit yeah especially after all this bad. time. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well I had um I had a Forbidden Orchard in my hand. I just didn't pay it, not play it. I will pay for the one though, thank you. Seth. Just saying. I paid I paid a couple of times. I cut co- a couple <laughs> I think I'm like close to 50% for paying this game, which is way higher than 0%, which was all my previous Commander games put together. Yeah, baby step. <laughs> um, let's... Are you going to win, Tomer? Oh. <laughs> I'm play uh, Arbor Elf. Oh, I draw yeah, you a card? the cards. Uh, if I could take it back, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even pay for uh, Kroom. Hmm, okay. Well, it's playing out the hand. So I'm a little bit scared of what Dolan's going to do this turn. I think I got something, but we'll see. I mean, I did give you a lot of cards with the Ristic Study, <laughs> so hopefully you can do something. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I guess I could have just not paid for Ristic Study, let him let Dylan draw one card, but that's a cap, right? Because of Narset. So that's not the worst. It's still not great, though. Yeah, I'm, Sorry, I'm I didn't mean it. to stop you in your combat here. I'm trying to stop you in your end step. So how does the Vile Smasher deck... It's the same the same combos, right? We're looking for, like, Demonic Console Station, Thassa's Oracle-type shenanigans? Yep. Hmm. Wait, then how does the Urza deck win? Is it, uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's Scepter and um, Dramatic Reversal. Oh. Yeah, so once I put um, revert, Dramatic Reversal underneath a Scepter, 
All of these artifacts I have are going to net me infinite mana and infinite untaps. And then Urza lets you play your entire deck. Die, die. Yeah, and then I'm going to try to find a Codex Shredder from there and mill all y'alls out. Right, right. Yeah. So we're, we're going to have a lot of clicking that's going to happen eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think once you've established the combo, that's the worst thing about Magic Online is like you can't just say and then go infinite. But I mean, if if you're playing with people, uh, friends and stuff, then definitely people just scoop once you've established it. Yeah, that was the one thing I was kind of worried about is if we get to some weird points in that, how are we actually going to close out the game? No, I mean, once you've once you've shown the combo, that's it. I'll just I'll just have to click for a 65 loop so that I can mill out Tomer yeah, and then yeah. this will be the longest yeah, episode of Commander Class combo. you have. In honestly, in general, people on Magic Online, you run into a few people that'll like take advantage of it. But in general, there's kind of like an unwritten rule that once your opponent demonstrates their combo and you know you can't win, that you should just concede. And most people actually like do kind of abide by that unwritten rule for the most part, yeah. which makes I it think way it less painful. Yeah, I think it helps because there's nothing on the line really. Like we're not playing for for tickets or whatever. Um if it was like an actual tournament event and there's stuff on the line, people do make you do the combo usually because they want to run out your clock. Okay, so Jace. So that means... All right. So I can't... So if you... if you, Oh, so that's that's the win. Well, sort of. There's a Narset, though. But does it... So I do have a Fiery Islet so that I plan on cracking upkeep. in Cam's upkeep there. Oh. Well... But I, so I can't yeah, so do it can, right now. So you can win on Cameron's turn. Right. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to go for here. Cameron, please let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, mean, I, I would I would be happy if you didn't let it happen. I, I yeah, I'm I'm trying to win over here. <laughs> really? That's what I put on top? <laughs> it's fine. You know what's you know what's really nice about my commander is that all of this stuff still adds me mana. Yeah, is hmm. pretty good like that. Like that. Ah, jeez. All right, I guess I have to look for something here. Are you activating Urza to try to find yeah. something? Yeah. That that, this is how oh, desperate right. I'm getting we're, to. We're good. It's fine. <laughs> this <laughs> is <laughs> the level of desperation. This was, yeah. <laughs> Highest level. Whatever. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Getting... Time twister. I... Oh, it's a sorcery, though. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can't even count. All right, well. Well, I get a card draw. All right, well, I tried, guys. It's up to you. I got nothing, unfortunately. Oh, I, I have something. Thanks to all this card. I don't know if it's enough. But oh, come I'm gonna on. try to. <laughs> I'm gonna try to help. Guess so. Um, Using your precious treasure tokens. Well, I didn't know if I the should. Ultimate sacrifice. I didn't know if I should hard cast this or pitch something, but. <sighs> Do this. I can't even draw. I can't even find anything else. Oh, and you don't even have to pay for the one this time. Yeah, saved by the Narsa. Yeah. yeah. Then maybe that's the key. I just have to play more Narsets in my <laughs> in my Rhystic Study decks. Oh, Narset is so studies. good. Narset is so good in Commander. Yeah. All right. I guess you want me to have a full library. So let's uh, play this. All right. Staying alive and for the moment. Let's um let's let's activate Jace. A very competitive card. Mill target player two. <laughs> Do it. Excellent. Let's get. Cam, you were topping, I think, right, or something? Oh. Well, not after I just shuffled with Urza. Oh, yeah, you shuffle with Urza anyway. Okay, so then I can do... Let's see here. Let's just play more mana. So there's one card that... It's kind of like a pet card. Uh, I really like it a bunch. And I was wondering why it's not played much in CDH. Maybe I, I just need some enlightenment. Is this an Edric so question? I, no, I, I know. I know Edric's not top level. It's still, it's still my baby boy, and I'll rep him anytime. But uh, I really like the War of the Spark version of Ashiok. Um, it Ooh, shuts yeah. down all opposing tutoring, so fetch lands and everything. And it also is like a like a one sided uh, rest in peace because you can just like bajuka bog all your opponent's graveyards at the same time. But it costs three mana, so. I was wondering, have people ever like dabbled with uh, War of the Spark Ashiok, or does it just not really kind of fit uh, the meta, or is it too expensive or whatnot? No, I think yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think it's really good. Go I mean, <laughs> we're both so excited to talk about this card. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I really like it. It's uh, it 
make sure that all of like the the flash hawk players just can't find their combo that way um there's a lot of graveyard decks out there like anything that's going to reanimate something that kind of deals with too um there's a a lot of good uses for it and you can even get it out on turn one if you go uh dark ritual right yeah i think i think actually this deck plays ashiok um so yeah, I th- I think the card is good, but I think it's only good in like a controlling shell, and more often than than not, controlling shells just aren't the best place to be in CDH because it's easier to be proactive than reactive. Right. Um. But in a deck that wants to be controlling, then yeah, I think it's it's great, but it definitely doesn't go in every CDH deck. Right. So like Urza would want to run it if it could, but it's it's a black card. Probably so yeah. Probably yeah. I would imagine Urza would want to want it, run it maybe if it could. Okay, I'm happy then. But yeah, yeah, I I've definitely liked Ashiok a lot. It's is very versatile. Yeah, I just find myself jamming it into every single like blue black deck that I, I can run it in, and I'm always just really happy to see it. But then I, I look at like a lot of CDH decks, and if they do have blue black, I don't usually see them. So like this deck doesn't. Yeah, not it's happen. it. Right, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's not as common, but I do see it from time to yeah. time, but just in the more controlling shells. Yeah, and this one, this my deck is like full combo. Like all it wants to do. Is right, yeah, you're combo. all in. Oh. All right. Oh, boy. That could find the scepter. Yeah. That could I'm, do it. I'm out of force of wills. <laughs> this <laughs> Narset is really messing me up here, though. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea how much mana I'm going to need this turn. Let's say no and let you have a card for now. I get to draw, right? I get my one. Yeah. Man. Yeah, we go. Okay. Oh, it's on me. Oops. So Tezzeret. Yeah. Oh, even just... Winter Orb would be annoying. There's a there's a lot of artifacts that would be bad. Um, I think we're gonna do this minus two. Mm-hmm. Are we getting? I don't know why. I don't know why I, don't know why I smell Winter, Winter Orb coming. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, it seems seems bad, <laughs> especially since I wasted a treasure paying Foristic Study. <laughs> So much regret. <laughs> I've learned yeah, to never pay well. foristic study. It is re- no, 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 that's no, wrong. Yeah, it's never right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's the takeaway, Seth. <laughs> no. uh, you goaded me into it too, Tomer. Oh, I just wanted. I just wanted to help. <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. Uh, all right. Well, that's not great. I guess I have some artifact mana. I'm not super into this. <sighs> But the card that's messing me up the most is this Narset here. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh. I think I want my Narset, though. Enough that I think I'll actually just jump block. I also like drawing cards, though, but okay. Yup. Hmm. Shame. I like, Man, I feel like you guys wanted, like, a fast, high-power CDH game, <laughs> and you got, like, the grindiest slugfest I've ever actually, seen. I actually... I'm down for it. Yeah, I'm actually really glad this is how it turned out, because normally the audience, I think, that watches Commander Clash is pretty casual, and I think yeah. that's an audience that has, like, kind of that misconception you were talking about of CDH always being this really fast, turn to, like, nothing you do matters type format. So maybe it's, like, the perfect game to have for for that audience, because it definitely shows that that's at least not always true, because this is, I mean, we're on turn eight, and <laughs> the game is still just kind of grinding along. No one seems super close to just winning. We've all, yeah, this, we've all yeah, threatened this... to win at one point, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's been a lot of game-winning spells on the stack, at least. And we've had a lot of stuff, uh, you know, really not helping us win either. I mean, there's been stack pieces. No one's been able to draw cards. There's been counter spells going all over the place, too. So we've really gotten a lot done in this game. It's been a really interesting yeah, this, game, I think. Mm-hmm. This feels like a typical CDH game to me. This feels like about on average of what we how we normally play. It, it, it gets about this grindy, usually. Mystic Mora. And you are allowed to draw cards. No. That is it's, unfortunate. It's pretty bad now, though, because no one has mana to cast a bunch of spells. So, or really any cards in their hands. You guys have one card in your hand, right? And I have yeah, but I've been I've been actually quiet this entire time because I've been agonizing on what I do with this card. Oh boy! <laughs> um, so it's well, like it's a, a tutor, tutor. or something. Mm-hmm. It's so a what do you get with it? Right? And I don't know what a tutor for. I'm gonna try my best though. All right. Uh, I guess we go attacking. So I guess we got to attack Tezzeret. That's fair. Five mana Winter Orb was still worth it. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Everyone was mostly <laughs> tapped out, so it was good timing. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a slowdown. Uh, 
what tutor do you have? It took me, it saved me a full turn cycle and I still don't know the answer. <laughs> Uh, I'll show you very soon. Or maybe I won't. Maybe it's not a tutor. Maybe I lied. Maybe it's all bluffed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even pay for Mystic Studies now. Definitely can't pay for Mystic Grimora. Oh, yeah. I should have. Oh, I should have actually tutored a response. Uh, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> yeah, no. We're just, we're, we're friends here. That's why. Helping you out on purpose. Not because I punt. All right. What green tutor are you casting? Uh, oh, what? Why did you just have two mana? I pay, I pay for the rest of the Oh, no, I uh, couldn't make it uncounterable. Oh, you couldn't. Even though you're paying for, yeah, I can so see you it. paid two life for Besage you to pay for risk. You're way more committed to paying for risk studies than I am. That's <laughs> so for the sure. One thing that irks <laughs> I me love is the people drawing more cards than me, and also people not paying for risk study. <laughs> and this kind of go hand in hand. All right, so the thing I was agonizing for, I'm going to show the viewers, this is this is how it looks like. I think, considering what I have left in my deck, I should be taking Spellseeker, but then after that, I don't know what I'm going to get with the Spellseeker, but gosh darn it, I'm going to cast it. You could get a Worldly Tutor. <laughs> I think I'm just like, <laughs> my my current plan is I'm going to get... A demonic tutor, and that leaves me pretty open on possibilities. Yeah, and then you can demonic for vamp, and just <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it going. And then mystical tutor off that. It does uh, deck thinning. Perfect. Hashtag deck thinning. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Got to thin all the tutors out of your deck so you have more lands. I can get a one mana. I can get a get a one mana something. Ugh. This rustic study is still doing work. Really is. All right. All right, you can seek for a spell. Thank you. So who's closest to winning? Like, I I feel like... It looks like you, from my okay. point of view. I guess that's probably true. I feel like threat assessment is a lot different in CDH when everyone's comboing. When In more casual games, a lot of times you can get a sense from the table more of who's ahead. But I feel like in CDH, the threat assessment's a lot different. 100%. I think it's a lot more like how many cards are in everyone's hands, like Legacy, where like you, like how many cards in your hand dictates really if you're ahead or not. You're at six to four, four, and, and four. I have one. So I think you're ahead, plus the Narset and the Mystic or more. So you have like two kind of like draw engines. Yeah, that is, that is very true. Like stopping us from drawing and you get to draw as well, plus you're already up two cards. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. It, it's really not as much as what you have on board. I mean, what you have on board still matters, but it, it's the, the threats that are in your hand that are the scariest. Right. Uh, sorry, this is taking me a while. Uh, Absolutely uncalled for. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know what you get. Maybe Noxious Revival? I think, What's here? Yeah, I was looking at Noxious Revival right now, but I have like a Mystic Remora that nobody's going to pay for. Actually, maybe. No. Actually, yeah, I'm just going to go for this. This seems like the best generic option at the moment. Okay. Vampire Tutor, sure. Yes. Ooh, actually, your Arbor Elf's pretty good against the Winter Orb. That's something, at least. Yeah, and I'm actually going to oh, declare attackers. Oh, I can attack Jace. I guess that's correct. Oh, wait, I can kill Narset. Oh, but Narset's actually probably be helpful here. Narset might be helping, yeah. Yeah, you know what? I can't even activate it anymore. It's just keeping people from drawing a million cards with Rhystic Study. Actually, I'll just attack Dylan then, and then threaten in Lethal. That seems nice. I mean, not nice to do. I guess, but yeah, no, it's probably right. <laughs> mm, then I would go to seven, and then but, uh, Swan yeah, Song's oh, doing work. Birds is pretty valuable against Winter Orb, do you? Yeah, that's that guy I want. I don't want to chump just yet, but I, that might have been a mistake. This is one of the few times that this uh, bird token is actually going to matter from a Swan Song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's actually doing some work. I don't think this has happened since it was in standard. <laughs> yeah i i don't think i've ever died to the swan song bird token dylan you know this is now a rule right you can't die to the swan song token. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess so that is its goal it's bloodthirsty it's seen combat it, it just wants more now it has a taste for flesh now <laughs> <laughs> taste for human flesh <laughs> that seems like something would be an icori right. actually <laughs> Man-eating like, bird like, of some kind? Yeah, wolf bird mm -hmm. or something, I don't know. 
That might actually be a real card. I mean, we have porcupine parrots and stuff, so... I do love that this set is basically just like a huge Simic combine. It re- it feels... Everything feels so Simic. You're, I definitely agree. Yeah, slapping creature types on everything. I will say that the Nightmare Squirrel is pretty disappointing. Everyone was like so hyped about that, and it's some just like horrible white common. <laughs> well, speaking of Ashiok... Hey. Oh, something, but no. I don't... Hmm. So, nah, I mean, it's, you just got that vampiric tutor, so it's doing something, I guess. Ugh. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> um, is there anything? You better cast the tutor, Tomer. Yeah, no, it's not It's not great right now, is it? Definitely vampiric tutor. I, I promise I won't ask you. If you... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I would do that. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I think I have to let it pass then. Ooh. No, I will not. Uh, well, I can't I can't tutor directly into a Jace activation. That seems bad. Yes, I will draw a card. Thank you very much, Mr. Grimora. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I can't pay for that. That's what I was going to get, though. <laughs> no, so I was going to get a Rhystic Study off it. That was my plan. Rhystic Study. Do you guys even what remember what happened this? at the beginning of this game? Seth never paying for Rhystic Study tricks? Yeah, the Rhystic... This You're is a turn through wheel of fortune study. Game, right? That's what started all of this insanity. Insanity. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd do it again. <laughs> I know you would. Sorry, let me just think here for a second. Uh, one, two, three. Spirit Token's got a new target. Uh, if only I had my mana, I would be much happier. <sighs> yeah, I just gotta pass, man. This is <laughs> rough. Okay, well. Mm-hmm. I was actually looking at my list. Does my list have infinite mana options? No, a lot of the lists have gotten away from making infinite mana, mm-hmm. um, even with Thrasios, just because Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation is normally like just as cheap mana-wise and a little bit easier because it doesn't need the setup of like having other dorks like Dramatic Scepter does. So yeah, a lot of decks aren't actually going infinite anymore. I mean, Urza is and some obviously are, but... Does that... Thassa's Oracle just makes that, it too easy. Does that mean like maybe like Thrasios is not as good as the other Simic partner? Ooh. Maybe. I, I think Thrasius is just the mana cost alone. A two commander versus a four commander is like a surprisingly huge deal a lot of the time. And since you're like in a Timna deck, like turn two Thrasios, turn two Timna attack with Thrasios is like a pretty decent play. Yeah. Blast one up to three. It's about time that I start doing something about this stuff that's on the board here. <laughs> All right, I was, let's see I was how these... about that mana crit, but it might actually... This game is... Has gotten so grindy, it might <laughs> like actually do a thing. <laughs> I feel- <laughs> I've had some pretty good luck with this mana crypt. We're going to see how this rolls. Tails again. And Cam, uh, okay. att- has anyone attacked you? Is that 23 life that all your own doing? Uh, I've gotten hit by Crown once. Oh, right. Yeah, the commander. Oh, right, yeah, the commander. Let me just see that. Yeah, I don't think I've been very aggressive this game. I think it's mostly just Seth, Seth going around. And actually the construct. So, right. so, so. Try so, countering so. this. <laughs> Stifle. I don't think I have anything for that. Ah, I should have known. <laughs> Boom. All right. Seth, you have seven cards in hand over there? I do. Uh, you probably hate that I'm asking you that, don't you? Yeah, it is a, a little <laughs> bit concerning. Is there a wheel coming? Um, For me. Oh. Target opponent to choose. Is this like the rebound card? This is actually something that I'm surprised yes! sees play. Yes. <laughs> Ah, I love that card, but I always thought it would be, like, too expensive for CAD. I'm going to give you an additional card to draw, Seth, so that I can get even more cards now. Wow. That's a lot of cards. Powerful! Hmm. <laughs> no. Uh, well, we will draw a card. I think I have to do this. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm not going to really counter it. You can still, you can still oh, cast okay. it. You just gotta wait a bit. Yeah, we've gotta be, we've gotta be within three <laughs> turns of the game by now. It's turn nine. This is crazy. <laughs> this is like longer than our casual game, man. Yeah, this is nuts. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll get like five games. Yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure, right. For sure. I, this might be like the only. It's an hour and forty-five already yeah. for this one. Jeez. Games always end on turn two, so it's like <laughs> obviously we'll just like cram in like ten games. All right, I'm back on the whoever counters my <laughs> stuff gets attacked. Yes. Yeah, that's that's fair. I think I'll just take it. It's only well, hmm. Do I have any other ways to bounce my extortionist? Like that's my best thing to do against this winter orb. But I'm not sure if I what I have left. 
that actually gets me out of that. Uh, gets it back in my hand, if anything. Um, yeah, okay. We will we'll block. All right, chipping away at the board here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thinking about another 30 turns, I'll have this seized up in combat damage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming this is not how most CDH games end with <laughs> with a Urza construct beating down for a million turns and a swan token. No. Definitely you know what? We, we had a game once where I have no idea what happened, but it literally came down to all combat damage. And it was Crown, funnily enough, that ended up winning the game by swinging in for lethal commander damage. <laughs> <laughs> Which we really Crown should have had a in his... a lot of the format. Crown's like one of the biggest things in CDH. It's kind of funny. We really should have had a <laughs> at, besides his contract. Yeah, we really should have had a historian there to <laughs> make note of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are we? Hmm, do I even need this anymore? No. In that case, we'll pay one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Huh. That's interesting. Well, play the land. I guess this Jace is actually a thing now again sort of so attack jace i guess i can't active activate now dylan's so low though uh yeah seven is not that much it's not yeah i'm i'm honestly amazed that i'm still alive <laughs> at this point <laughs> that sylvan library has put in a lot of work did a lot of work i have a ton of mana and i've drawn a ton of cards but just not in the right order i think <laughs> Play this. Okay. Oh, I have so many cards in hand. I don't care about imprinting a lot. <laughs> Ooh, that is exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. 46 cards left. Maybe I won't need Codex Shredder to win the game. Yes, mill him out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or let, let Seth mill himself out. That's that's a, that's a strategy I usually go for. It usually works. All right, Ponder, come on. Let's Let's draw something. At this point, I think I'm just almost begging you to find a way to this shit. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. All right. Yeah. No. Shuffle. <laughs> None of that helps. <laughs> oh, okay. Fetch land. That's not what I was looking for. Um, I don't even know how to win at this point. <laughs> I think I have to go for the <laughs> consultation combo somehow. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. More ramp. Go ahead. <laughs> and that's still all I got. <laughs> all right. Finally. Same bang, this actually paid off. Are you going to cast your Vampiric Tutor now? Yup. Yeah, nice. It's a tutor, yeah, for, go. It's a tutor for another tutor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to crack my fetch land. This time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hashtag deck thinning. <laughs> I think it's actually relevant at the moment. Hopefully I have lands left. I didn't actually check. I, I should, I think. Whew. One. Yeah. That was close. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. So the only thing I can think of at this point, there's only one card on my mind. <laughs> Risk, it's like, risk study. I don't think I can like recur. It's gonna be risk study. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll make your choice a little easier for you. No. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, no, I hope no. this isn't even mind sensor. Yes. No. <laughs> No, mind sensor, mind sad. sensor. Oh, yes. Bird. No. <laughs> I mean, oh, I tap my man. mana. Idiot bird is here. I tap my oh, mana ball for that, beans. which is clearly incorrect, but I couldn't resist. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that was what I drew off the Mystic Remore that you didn't pay no. for. <laughs> no. Really? Oh, <laughs> you can't tell me that. Why would you tell me that? Well, maybe what oh, you want to be top four. Yeah. <laughs> Elves of Deep Shadow. Please, this Vamp Tutor, you get to find Elves. something. Scalding Tarn. Okay, I have to grab this one. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's the worst impulse I've ever seen. <laughs> Probably. It's only one man. It's cheaper still. Oh, man. All right. Uh, just this. I know what I'm getting. Can you choose not to select a card off of Vampiric Tutor and then just shuffle your library if you don't like any of them? I believe so, Ooh. yeah. I think so, yeah. I should have had a stop. That's, my, uh, that's next level. That That is very much next level. Yeah, I think you can always fail to find, so you should be able to. I should have activated Thrasius and not drawn this card that's useless. All right, <laughs> cool. <you> tutor- um, <laughs> is that the card you just Vampiric Tutor you? for? It was one of the four that was available to me. All right, you're gonna I, you're gonna fully attack. I really here. love even mind sensor. Actually, I should attack 
to to Jace. Yeah, getting send a message. Jace off the battlefield would probably be fine. It would make me feel a little more comfortable, I guess. Yeah, I, I uh, should do that, shouldn't I? All right, yeah, maybe I objectively you should, I, but I, I still want should. you to. <laughs> Seth, I really should, but uh, <laughs> I'm also very spiteful. All right, fair, fair. <laughs> Take take the three. Yeah, we'll take the three. Or we'll or chump. It. I mean, I know I, I, I'm, I'm gonna keep that mind sensor around <laughs> <laughs> as a reminder of that vampiric tutor. Oh. <laughs> Just awful. Oh, I really wish I hadn't tapped my mana vault though. That was actually pretty painful to <laughs> to spite you like that. I am very glad. If there was one silver lining here, is that you're gonna take one damage on your upkeep. And be down three mana against the Winter Orb. Oh, nice. Um, whoops. It is turn 10. Yes. <laughs> so what what turn would you say most CEDH games go to? Probably four or five. Okay. Or maybe six. So we're, we're a bit past that. Yeah, yeah I would say a long double game. Double. Usu- no, I'm sorry. I would say a long game usually comes in around like turn eight. So this is longer than a typical long game then, really. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, we're getting pretty grindy at this point. Yeah. What do I even... Yeah, this is typical for, like, our usual games, because we're very spiteful, <laughs> and we, we focus on uh, card draw and spiting. <laughs> We've had a decent amount of spite this game. Mm-hmm. <sighs> All right, we're on the mill Seth out plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Nice. <laughs> I only have 41 cards left now. It could work. Oh, Demonic Tutor, that would have been a decent draw. Nice. Yeah, it's just going to be a oh, pass Jace is up me. to seven? Getting close to ultimate. Oh, I forgot. Jace has an ultimate. Okay, cool. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah he actually does something else. I should have attacked time. Jace. All right, all right. I should attack Jace too, but since you attacked me last turn, I think I have to swing everything at you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, we could have just killed Dylan, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could I could have and should have been dead so long ago, but somehow I'm keeping it in here. All right, let me. I'm gonna look at a random card in Dylan's hand. Hope you saw a good one. Where's the revealed? Ooh, re- oh, I guess it did. It show it to everyone. <laughs> I think it did. I think yeah, it's in yeah. a uh, yeah because it's revealed. So I've been waiting for. So now that you know I have a reap, I guess I've been waiting for someone to play a black permanent forever so I can get that demonic consultation back. But no one wants for their turn now. <laughs> I wish I could play my turn. I just have white mana sources for some reason. Oh, the recurring insight. The recurring it's stuff comes down. Oh, down. Yeah, but it's just a suspend. Oh, yeah, no, whoa, whoa. yeah. I thought it was. I, I thought it was is is return, but no. Oh no, no, God, no. I wish. So while uh, still a while. By the away. time it comes down, everyone's gonna have emptied oh, yeah, their yeah, hand. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really not gonna be great. Come on, mana crypt. You can do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only need seven more flips. That's the only way this game is ending is uh, those mana curse have to have to work against camera. Yeah, and I'm on the yeah. only one turn mana fault clock. They're doing a pretty good job at working <laughs> against is, me. So. <laughs> All right, jeez, do I go for Dylan and try to kill him, or do I just oh, dude, we're on the same, we're friends. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> probably this chase to be honest, but do whatever you want. That sounded like a good draw. This... Oh, you have the stupid odds. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you got what you want in the top four. Oh, jeez. All right, let's see what you these could top... be there, right? Hey, there's always a chance. Yes. <laughs> Best my dumb ever. Bird. Oh, my God. I've just been sitting over here laughing about it at the expense of all these other people. And now here I am. Oh, look at this. The exact card I wanted was in my top four. No oh, way. Was it really? A hundred percent. All right, guys. Oh. Were what dramatic reversal? Oh, dramatic no. reversal was in the top four cards of my library here. Oh boy, huh? I uh, might end okay. it. I guess I should respond. Maybe if I can try. I don't know. Oh, I gotta, I gotta draw my cards Heather. first. Oh god. Yeah, I guess we should probably try to stop this. Uh, oh, that's actually just, like, so. the win, right, with Urza. That's the whole deck being cast. Okay. Yeah, so right. once right. once right. this yeah, resolves and I get the games. reversal underneath it, I'll be able to just start tapping all of my artifacts for blue mana, untapping everything then, and uh, being able to do that infinitely, so that that way I'll have infinite mana, infinite Urza activations, and I can get myself down to Codex Shredder from there. Yep, that makes sense. I, too, will activate Thrasius. 
Hey, you guys better get these activations in while you can. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to draw my Mystic Remora card. Come on, free counterspell. That is Impact and Negation, because that would kill me. <laughs> Uh, okay, it is. Uh, uh, I guess it's better than the land. Uh, was it? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just hold on to it. I'm sure you guys will figure it out. Isn't it reveal? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, there it oh. is. Oh, brainstorm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a right storm and dig three. I don't know. That, Maybe yeah. it's good. That doesn't seem bad. <laughs> it's all right. Assuming this game doesn't end right now, our longest <laughs> Commander Clash game <laughs> was CDH. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is the longest game that you guys have played? Are we approaching? We've hit three uh, hours before, but we're getting we're up over two hours, or at I think around two hours for this one. So we're getting we're getting yeah. close. There's been some all stars this day in my mind. There was uh, when we did like old school Sliver Week with no combos or tutors. That was pretty. Oh, that was something. Oh wow, people, that sounds like a slug. Yeah, people <laughs> timed out because like the game just couldn't. The, the client couldn't handle it after a point. And, like, Seth would, like, try to activate one ability, and it would take him, like, a minute for just the action to go through. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm i not sure if he was kicked for inactivity or just timed out, I, but it was... It was little of column A, little of column B, probably. Yeah. The one that I remember was when we did Pauper Commander, and, like, everyone has all the counter spells because they're all commons, but <laughs> your best threat was, like, Crawl Worm level stuff, so no one could kill each other. I think that one went at least three hours, too. Like, that was... That was the least fun commander game I've ever played. <laughs> I was gonna say that can't be fun at that point. Dude, I kind of want. I kind of want to do it again. Oh wow! Ooh, this is good. my this is my favorite part about C D H. By the way, is just like I love seeing <laughs> just like the stacks of just stuff happening. <sighs> That's easily. I, I the guess most this Mystic Remora I can't pay for. Yeah. So counter spell on that, and then Narset's reversal, and you can't cast it again, right? Seth, you're tapped I have out there. bad lands, but that's not gonna do it. Hmm. That's not gonna get you too blue. See if you had more treasure. If tokens, I had so. that one treasure <laughs> that I spent paying for Mister Kamora, I think I I would have been able to stop this. <laughs> right, what did he learn? That's the takeaway. Yeah. So is that it? Uh, I don't have anything, so I think. I'm going to try to draw a card so. at this waterlog grove here. Can I do that? Sack it. Oh, you have the... Maybe I should, oh. like, spread down. The Isle it, too. Oh. Yeah, I got two shots to draw a card, and then that didn't do it. And so let's tap for some mana here, and let's draw a card. Give me something. Come on. Swan song. Oh. No. Oh. oh. I can top. I can top. Let me top here. Keep it going. Let me, uh... There's always a chance. Um, look at the top three cards. Is there anything? Maybe I should have done this first. Yeah. I think the last thing I had left was I could have tried to put that to the bottom Nothing. and get a uh, mental misstep. That's it. But that wouldn't be relevant Ooh. here. Yeah, I got nothing. No. So you got... No, I have... Oh. I have, like, Silence and Angel's Grace, but I didn't have the white mana to cast them, so I have nothing either. Hmm. So I think that's... I guess I, that's yeah. should be... Yeah, that's that was a good game. game. Probably, so just so you guys can be... see how this dramatic reversal works here. Yeah. I guess maybe not for you guys, but just for anybody here. So you have you have dramatic reversal imprinted on Isochron Scepter. Oh, Eight here's two. the other interesting oh, thing wait, though. Wait, Mystic Remora draws cards after every copy. Well, right? no, you because I'll a... be after this. I'll be able to start paying for Mystic Remoras. Oh, that, yeah, right. that's true. He can oh. pay because he'll make infinite mana. So once he gets to enough, he can start netting enough. Actually, I think even here I might be able to because you have one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, so, all oh, you have like eleven mana or something, ten mana, some ridiculous amount. Yeah, and that is... Oh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do with that. One, two, three, four... I mean, this five, this like alone is five mana here. Six. Pay for some of this here. And <laughs> tap the construct for good measure. Pay two mana so that I can recast another dramatic reversal. Right. You can pay the four and then you net still three mana, four mana. Yeah, so that's infinite. Even and then you can already, for Mystic yeah, Remora. Yeah, pay for it. Yeah. 
So from this point, Cam can make infinite mana, activate Urza as many times as he wants until he gets Codex Shredder, and then keep on activating Isochron and mill us all out and probably destroy most of our stuff on the way until we draw on our turns and die. I will say, uh, right. I would not make you play through that combo. That <laughs> Not yeah. only is the <laughs> dramatic reversal a lot of clicks, but then you have to like do the... <laughs> Do the Codex Shredder mill out, which is a ton more. Like, I, that would take a long time and be a big. Oh, my I'm fingers are I'm already cramping up over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was worried about that. If we if uh, we're gonna have to have Cam show us how that happens. Normally, when we play, we just say, "Yeah, it's, we're yeah, dead." No, we're dead now. <laughs> I just want I want to just uh, see it like the first time to like see what the combo actually is. But I think I think we can all agree now that the Cam has the win, and we're not gonna. You know, punish him for it. Yes, yeah, so you have to do I'm every single click. Yeah. Thank you, you for win. ending this game, Cameron. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit over <laughs> here and do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, check back until you Cameron guys can see. <laughs> You're on the clock. Oh, that'll be. The I have last another. Time I have another thirty minutes yeah, over here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Oh, boy. Yeah, good game. Good game. Good game. Good, good game, game, guys. That was a wild. That was a wild game. I, so I will say, and I'm sure we'll do a wrap up, but that was not what I was expecting. And I don't, uh, I know that CDH is not all turn two kills, but I was also not expecting it to be such a grind fest. So I think that was a really unique game. At least, uh, I felt like it was, but what did you guys think being like the CDH experts? Like, was that kind of outside the norm for you guys as well? It was pretty close to the norm, a little bit longer than normal. I think the best CDH games happen when you have a control deck, a stacks deck, and two combo decks. It makes the games like very interesting. Um, that was, that was grindier than, that was grindier than average though, for sure. But it was within the realms of a lot of our games, to be honest. It really was. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of really good spots of interaction there. I would say that this is about, I would say like 70 to 80% of what a typical CEDH game is, with the exception of just how long and how grindy this got to be. I think it's really interesting because I know I was like very close to winning a couple of times, but when you have, three players that also have interaction it's not as easy as it seems because i was like oh i got yagwell like i i'm just gonna win here obviously but when you have three people trying to stop you uh it, there are a lot of a lot of opportunities to stop the combos because i feel like if i had resolved uh yagwell i would have won if i had resolved underworld breach i would have won so there was like multiple times where i felt like i was like right on the cusp of winning only to get countered by something a hundred percent. That is like the most common feeling I have when playing CDH is you're always almost there. You're always a turn off, a mana off, a card off. It, it seems that way anyway, because the, the deck ceilings are so high. You're always like right there, but actually making it happen is really hard in a four player game. Yeah, I felt like if I got that ad nauseum off, for example, I, I knew my deck list had a bunch of uh ritual effects. Like I had yeah. not only like soul ring, but I also had like mox diamonds, all these ways to generate extra mana so even if i had very little mana on the battlefield i had all that mana potential in my deck and i felt like if i could just like draw enough cards with just a low average cmc i had enough life total for it i felt like i could just combo off and win off off just an ad nauseum even though i have nothing on the board and very little mana to work with so every single like draw definitely yeah, that, that's like why i countered that for sure and what you saw with our counter spells is also typical of how these games will go too. You yeah, know, typically yeah. the most important things to counter are going to be, well, obviously the win conditions, but the card draw that gets people the win conditions, especially Mystic Remoras and the Ristic Studies that are going to be multiple cards for one card. Uh, those are really the most important things you have to stop on your opponent's side. They can have as much mana as they want, but if they have stuff to do with that mana, that's when you're actually in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not that, no, that the dock side is extortionist. Really good card. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> you don't really, it's we don't, I don't Jesus. really see it often played, but, uh, when it does, it's, it always reminds me how good it is. Yeah, that card has become a CDH yeah. staple. That is probably one of the best red cards in the format, honestly. It made like 20 some mana that game. Yeah, it was insane. Yeah. And then when he bounced, I think it, it was, was like Chain of Vapor. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Twice. So I think it was 28 mana right. for five mana altogether, which, Probably about the best ritual you could have in Magic, honestly. Like, that was pretty insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it really doesn't well, get too much better than that. Yeah. Well, I, I thought maybe we'd just, like, jam, like, ten games in a row. But it turns <laughs> out we had a grind fest that lasted, like, o almost two hours. So 
I think more than uh, that. My audio has been recording for two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I think instead of like hopping into a second game and and having another two hours, thing, this is probably a good point. Like this is this is the average length of a Commander Clash game for us is usually somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and this hits it like right right in that that average zone. So I think that that's a Perfect. good spot where we'll stop it for now. Um, Thank you so much to both you, Dylan, and, and you, Cameron, for joining us. Um, Play to Win YouTube series that is very new on, onto the field, but I, I've been really enjoying it. I've been binging all your stuff. Uh, so <laughs> I just thank you so much for, or for dropping by. And I was wondering, um, you have your YouTube show. Uh, is there anything extra that we get to see from you is there any projects is there anything else the viewers should know other than just the youtube channel that that we're going to be linking uh what else do you have going on uh yeah we have weekly videos coming out on our youtube channel we have a patreon and a discord as well where we kind of do some extra content there um we've just started though we're literally about two to three months in right now so we're getting warmed up but we're going to be doing some top 10 lists on our patreon we talk on Twitter a lot with the community, talking about new cards and different interactions and stuff. But mainly, play to win YouTube, play to win MTG on Twitter, and play to win MTG on Patreon is uh, CDH is what we do. That's, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Sweet. Well, I'll have the links to links in the video description below. There's going to be a link to the Patreon. There's going to be a link to the YouTube channel. There's going to be a link to the Twitter. Everybody, check it out. It's a great channel if you haven't already seen it. <laughs> And that'll wrap up this Commander Clash. So until next time, everyone, see ya! Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up with the latest and greatest, click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to check out similar videos, click on the links here and here.